T minus six days until the World Cup roster for the U.S. men's national team gets announced in Soccer We Trust YouTube fam. It is getting close to squeaky bum time. So let's get after it after you hit like and subscribe, of course. Vamos! Yes! What is up, everybody? Welcome to Fabian Johnson's favorite podcast in Soccer We Trust. I'm Jimmy Trashcare, Cream Cheese, Conrad Dino Conrad, alongside Charlie Chuck Wagon Davies and Hollywood Heath Pierce. And today we are less than one week away from the roster being announced, but we got some goddamn injuries to attend to. And that isn't isolated to us because England are missing Reese James and Kyle Walker. France is missing Angola Conte and Paul Pogba, just to name a few examples. But like those countries, we're going to have to adjust. So guys, and Charlie, I'm going to come to you first. I kind of want to, it's hard not to just say the players' names, right? I, we, we just dissect the players a lot, but I kind of want to get into overall tactics because you and I both know, and Heath, I'll throw you in there too. Don't don't, don't put me, don't just throw me into something like that. I don't know what you're about to say. Don't put me and Charlie into this boat. Don't no, put words in my mouth. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Me and the audience, we all know outside of you. Oh, don't that, put them either, what Jimmy. Are you you speak, what are you about? speak for you, and then we will decide okay. uh, yes. as a jury. Okay, well, because well, I, so, I, yeah. I know what's coming. I know what's coming okay. in the first game. Wales manager Rob Page is going to try and replicate what Japan did to us. And, and I hope that we've learned from that obviously painful and disappointing 90 minutes where plan A wasn't working, but we kept trying to plan or do plan A and shove it down their throats when it wasn't working. And why wouldn't you do what Japan did? I don't know if, if, if Wales can be as organized as that, but we're going to have to adjust to that. And, and because we haven't seen any evidence of that, I wonder, because we're missing a Weston McKinney, Tim Ree might be somebody we're looking to start. Ricardo Pepe looks like he's going to be our number nine. Do you put Gio Reyna centrally now? I mean, there's all these things. How are we going to adjust to that, Chuck? Take it away. We're not going to play out of the back. We're not going to do it. <laughs> you think, though? I mean, that's that's like a Greg Berhalter. Let's be real. Focal point. Whale, like whale, quarter story. Wales, for one. Gareth Bale is not Gareth Bale of old. It, it's just not. He's not going to be match fit. He's not going to be sharp. That's a huge bonus for the U.S., because that's the game changer. That's the outlier when you look at Wales. Gareth Bale, if but, but, he's but, 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 not, but, but. have you seen the flag? The flag says it's been changed. It says Wales Golf LAFC. I mean, that he puts on the Wales shirt. It's just different. Stop. Yeah, no, it, Steve Trundle is no matter, no matter Steve what. Steve U.S. <laughs> men's national team ambassador for just leaving homeboy over there on the bench for a little bit uh, as he Let's, came over. B Bale's not going to be a hundred percent. He's not going to be match fit. He's not going to be sharp. So regardless. I think for this U.S. team, you're starting off on, on the on I think on a, on the right foot because he he can't I I would argue that he's not going to be able to play 90 minutes either. We're looking at Gareth Bale for 60, 65, and that's their best chance of having Gareth Bale for three matches in the World Cup. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now on top of that, I think the U.S. give them the press. Go ahead, press us. We're going to play to our strengths and play into the channels for. Team Oweya for Christian Pulisic. And who's going to come into the midfield? I would think it's Gio Reyna alongside Yunus Musa with Tyler Adams sitting. Give it to me. I, I am it here too. for it. I am I want, here for that. I, I want that too. Heath, now am I putting words in your mouth? You don't think that Wales manager Rob Page is going to try to come out and do the same thing that Japan and Saudi Arabia did to us? Like, uh, that they, gave, they, oh, they basically no, wrote no, the no, playbook no. on how to, how, to, how to make it hard for us. No, at the time you were attempting to put those words in my mouth, but now I agree with you. Now that you said <laughs> yeah. what what you said, I agree with you. Like they're going to make it difficult for us in a number of ways, and I think teams know that if they can come at us in a certain way, right, press us and try to get us to play, and then and then drop into and this is what I this is where I go back to. Greg Berhalter failed in the last camp, but what I give him credit for is trying something different. Because if we play the same way, every team can scout us the way that we mm -hmm. played in World Cup qualifying. I give him credit for trying. And I give him credit for failing uh, and accepting that he failed. Now, I don't like our chances of being able to play in a different way. But if you're Wales, you're like, hey, let's press them in a way that forces them to change their game. And then if they can start to solve that, we can change our game to something else, right? We can maybe sit a little bit deeper. We can sit into our deep blocks if they're struggling with that. And be able to, to sort of keep us guessing. A lot of that is that fluidity of the game. And so I do agree with you, Jimmy, that, that they're going to come out in that way and try to punch us very early on for some sort of bad turnover and get... You could feel with our national team in those games. When we made one mistake, all of a sudden it was just like oh, you could feel the momentum shift. Yeah, but are, don't you like are, that? Don't you like that teams are going to do that and overcommit and over overvalue 
their press and our weaknesses. That, if we take great. advantage of it, if we take yeah, advantage yeah. of it, who, yeah, that's who that. in the right mind thinks that Greg Berhalter is going to go. No, we're going to do exactly the same thing against Wales. The same way we played against Saudi Arabia and Japan, we're going to execute this time, but we're going to do the same thing. No, it, there's no way. There is zero possibility that we're going to say, guys, everyone drop deep and we're going to play it out of the back and, and have this be smooth with them pressing us like that. There's no way. Well, well, that's I think what's interesting about trying to play out of the back is that if it doesn't work, we never actually get to do what I think Greg Berhalter loves to do the most, which is high press. So, so it's almost like we'd rather That's play. That's not again. true. I get the sense that he would rather sometimes, and this is a this is somewhat of a Red Bull Red Bull philosophy. They'd rather play against the ball than to have it. So, so I'm I don't not know. Saying Greg, that Greg was Greg was a build out guy early at. at, at, at oh, but if the that's crew. not working, with, with the crew, it, with it was the a build out crew. Guy. Yeah, and it and it did not. It was not pretty. I mean, they had Steve Clark and goal. His feet were terrible in the beginning, <laughs> and they improved. And he was playing with Tyson Wall. Um, he was playing with Michael Parker. He's, gonna, he's, gonna, he's throwing out phenomenal. that MLS Cup 20, 2015 bad feet thing. Uh, <laughs> no, the, you, but, you can't shake but, it. You make a mistake no, no, like that. I'm, you can't shake I'm it. not saying 2015. I'm saying 2014. And they they were they were not good. We I mean they made the playoffs, but it was a it, we were like yes, play out of the back. We'll time everything. Yeah, and we set up perfectly, and we smacked them both home and away. The following season, it was consistent. And they were good building out of the back and they could break teams yeah. down. But that's when Greg Berhalter has every day to work on. Right, exactly right. Right, yes. exactly right. He, now he has them in, in camp right now, both Zimmerman and Long. Ooh, Zimmerman. That's yeah, like what, what, what's he doing? Zimmerman and Zimmerman. Like, like, you, you can have yeah, you, <laughs> but I'm saying but I'm saying that's that's not gonna be enough to say you guys, we had nine guys in training, and now all of a sudden now here's a World Cup, and I feel confident yeah. that we can build out of the back. That's not gonna happen. But what I am saying is you might have that philosophy as a club coach because you can work on it every single day. National right. team, that's not the case. And seeing where they were in the last friendlies, he's going to have to change and adapt. And I think that's what that's what makes him good for the okay. World Cup is because he's willing to adapt and change. If he's going to say, no matter what, we're going to build out of the back, then you know. Yeah, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. We're in trouble. Yeah, what I would say, though, is as much as I appreciate that philosophy, if it isn't working – then we Zimmerman. see what we did, Zimmerman. <laughs> if if if, uh, if if it's not working, we saw what we did against the first forty five minutes against Japan. We're just a lot of turnovers. We're never trying to adjust, put balls up over the top. If we can't put balls up over the top, I think maybe then the second most favorite thing for him to do is to go high press and to make sure we're trying to win the ball back as soon as we can. Now that again, to your point about timing, it's all very coordinated. Everybody's got to be on the same page. And so if we are going to hit that long ball, we can't have five guys thinking that and the other five guys dropping off. And I just. I find it interesting as to how quickly are we going to make that decision? Because I think Wales, if if I don't even want to give them any goddamn tips at this point, but but they should just drop off and let our center backs have the ball, and then and then see what happens, right? And and then and then I wonder what the decision is going to be because that will lull you into that false sense of security to like ah I I can do this, and then they sit on that second or third pass. And then they win it. And then we're a little bit of our team shapes out. And then we're going to counter it. And that's not a lot of fun. So so I guess let's put on. I know we got we got plenty of time to break down this game in particular. But as we're talking about this conversation, and Heath, I'll come to you first on this. What do you want to see? If you're the coach of the U.S. men's national team, knowing that it's probably no McKinney. I don't know who you want to put at center back. Matt Turner's hurt. And it looked like Zach Steffen might be your best and healthiest option coming mm -hmm. come November 21st. What do you want out of that first 45 minutes? Because I am a little bit tired and I don't, we're not, we're getting into no, no messing around type crap now. Yeah. We don't want to go into halftime going, oh, we should have done this and we should have done that. And mm -hmm. oh, this is the kind of adjustment. Yeah. It's got to be just small tinkering yeah. at that point at halftime, not this whole wholesale change in philosophy. Well, I, I want to see just a simplified game plan of being willing to say, look, we have an ideal way that we want to play. Uh, but if that's not working, simplify the game. And like Charlie said, Playing the channels is simplifying the game. Now, there's a lot of nuance to how you do it well and how you, you know, how you get in behind and all those things. But go back to certain basics if they are not working or if that's what the game is giving you. If you know the spaces in behind the channels or whatever, have that freedom and trust uh, in your players. And then the players have that freedom and trust with, with, with the manager to be able to solve those problems in real time. I would love to play through. I would love for them, I would love for Wales to show something, us break that first press and them go, okay. We we bluffed them. They bluffed back. Now let's uh, let's sit back and we can play through that. I would love for that. 
But in the first 45 minutes with the youngest team in the World Cup, I don't, I, I'm, I'm fine if we don't even settle in for 45 minutes. Keep it scrappy. Keep it big. Don't be afraid to lump in the channels. Take very little risk mm-hmm. and let the Same. game start to I feel that way. Let it start to present itself a little bit because that is how it happens a lot of times is it takes a while for that game to settle in. Everybody's a little antsy. No one's trying to make the big mistake. And so if we can mm-hmm. avoid that, if I'm Walker Zimmerman, if every time I got the ball, it's Zimmerman, I was on the, by the way. I'm sorry, <laughs> Zimmerman. Um, or, uh, or, or, or if I'm, or if I'm Cameron Carter Vickers, uh, like like whoever is in in the field, don't be afraid to lump that ball into the corner and push everyone up. I mean, we guys, should we just cancel this show? I mean, both of you guys are you're both so unprofessional. I can't even like. I am the world's I'm the world's foremost expert on what I'm saying right now, and you're laughing, guys. Come on. Uh, uh, no, but I, I do I do think that not being afraid to lump the ball into the corner even and push the numbers up and fight in that place for a while and do those little types of games, I think could be really, really important. Uh, still knowing that the whole goal against the Wales in the first game of the World Cup, if you could look at everyone in our group, that's who you want in the first game and that's who you want to get three points against. So it's not about getting a point. It's not about playing fearful, but it is about playing the tactical sort of mind games to figure out where you can get your three points from. Wait, wait. wait. You dumb dumbs. <laughs> you dumb dumbs. Listen, wait, I, I actually do appreciate you saying that there's some bluffing that has to happen with your tactics when you approach a game. Have we seen that under Greg Berhalter? Or do we just kind of play it straight up going, eh, we're just better, or 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 they're just going to let us do whatever we want. I, I don't are, know if I've ever seen any bluffing. Are you bluffing bl- or are you folding? I, well, that's the thing. I don't know. I mean, are, are they – have you seen any evidence of this bluffing? Because I, I know that we've experienced it and we've seen it. And we've tried yeah. to do it ourselves. But in this particular group of players and this coaching staff, I, check, I think check, this check, group, check, check, well, <laughs> <laughs> check, I call. Uh, yeah. What I will say <laughs> is that this group will figure it out. In my opinion, they have what it takes to possess the ball, especially with Gio Reyna on the pitch with Yunus Musa. They can play and keep the ball in the middle half, in the attacking half. They have those players. Christian, Gio, and Musa are all great in possession, good in uh, dribbling. I I think they'll get the hang of it. But like you both said, the first 15 minutes, first 20 minutes, play direct. We are not trying to connect those little five-yard passes in the back because that's when they got in trouble. And they're starting to say, you know what, I, I can play into this this little, this tight window here into Wes McKinney's feet or Tyler Adams feet. And maybe they weren't fit. They were facing their own goal. What do you expect with them to do with that ball? Now, if you play Gio Reyna or Yunus Musa, they have the ability to turn and wiggle and, and create that space. And then once they pop through, they're running at the back line, forcing people to come out of position or that back line just collapses into their own 18. And that's when you can find, Timothy Weah into space, mm-hmm. Christian Pulisic 1v1. That's when this game will open up. So I, I, I firmly believe that Greg would have learned enough things in that last couple matches to say, all right, I know we want to possess the ball. We have the ability to possess the ball against Wales and Iran in particular. But let's say for the first 20 minutes, let's let's be smart. Let's be safe. And we're just going to play direct and, and try and switch things up and then move our lines high. Yeah. Force them then, to break us down. Right. And then once the game settles in, we start to, mm-hmm. to, to play a little bit. Uh, what I really liked about your, your comments, Charlie, was that yes, getting Musa and, and Reyna on the ball is important, but it's those entry passes and how they're receiving the ball that I think is going to be of the utmost importance. So they can do those little half turns and start to run at whoever the opponent is. Now, what I do th- will add to what you're saying is what I like about Anthony Robinson being healthy again, and Serginho Des, thankfully, being healthy again and, and starting to get minutes for Milan after his little bit of an injury scare. Both of those guys are good in 1v1 situations. So if they have some pressure, they're very comfortable with maybe just pushing it to the side. They don't necessarily have to beat that player, but can they create a passing lane that allows them to find the players that you're talking about in a really meaningful position on the field? And if you add Tim Ream into the equation, who can hit that big switch, who is a good, calm passer of the ball, I really think that'll help settle our team in a lot of different ways. Players that we didn't have, available against Japan. So we'll have to wait and see. But now let's talk about the goalkeeper because Matt Turner is still out. Didn't play for Arsenal now in the last two match days in the Europa League. I'm going to come to resident Arsenal fan Heath Pierce on this. Uh, Are you nervous? Because Zach Steffen seems to be our best and healthiest option 
at this current moment. Does that make you nervous at all? Are you, are you back on the Zach Steffen train? You think Turner, if he gets healthy, you'd still start him? Like, what are your thoughts on this goalkeeper situation? Heath the, Pierce? the one thing I, I give uh, credit in this situation to is almost everybody stopped talking about Zach Steffen. And that might be the best thing that's happened to Zach Steffen. No one was talking okay. about him. Yeah, good shout. He's in the championship. He's not a Man City player anymore. He's not our big national team star anymore. He's just a guy playing in the championship, and he's grinded back from an injury to get consistent games, get solid results, and get reps, get minutes in, in, in high-pressure environments. So when I think about a, a starter, I'm not, I'm not worried about that. I think he, he's coming back into that fold from a place of humility, from a place of having to go back to sort of ground zero to prove himself. With minutes, not with potential, not with he's Zach Steffen at Man City, he, not any of this stuff or the environment that he's in every day. He's in a pressured environment where you're playing a lot of games and he's playing consistently. So I'm not worried about that. Now, the Matt Turner thing, uh, I'm worried about, again, that sharpness. Of course, he wasn't playing a ton of games as it was, but he was playing every other week or so like that. Um, so if this comes down to, I think, the manager's choice, but I'm not uncomfortable with Zach Steffen because I think he's he's found his form again and did it in the best way possible where it wasn't our number one and he's continuing to sort of make big mistakes. He's gone back to the, to the, to the grind and the hustle uh, kind of in the shadows from where our sort of peripheral has been or where our focus has been in terms of the players that we need and the pressures that are being placed on him. So I don't know what, what what's your take Charlie on, on Zach Steffen with regard to being the number one or, or what I just, what I just talked about. I think Zach finally is in a good rhythm with his health, with his performances, he's in the right frame of mind. And, and that's huge. Matt Turner, I think given his injury now and not being able to train every day, you always go with the hot hand. And, and I think Greg Berhalter had always favored uh, Zach Steffen because of his ability to play with his feet. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think that's going to be a, a massive sticking point in the World Cup considering we probably won't play out of the back all that often. But the fact that he can start attacks and find those wide players if teams do press us, I, I like the fact that Zach Steffen is, is fit, feeling good, and starts for that first game against Wales. But I think it's a win-win. Whether Zach starting or Matt Turner, I think we're all pretty confident in both being getting the job done. But the fact that if we're in trouble, the ball goes back to, to Zach's feet, you feel pretty confident that he can pick out a player to, to start, start an attack. Now... Mm -hmm. I think what, what's really important is just being able to, to organize the back line, whether to, to tell them, hey, enough of the short pass or enough of the trying to keep it out of the back, mm -hmm. playing to the channels, push them up higher. That communication is going to be massive in this World Cup to say, guys, let's drop deep. Maybe Tim Ream is playing. Let's drop a little bit deeper. We'll sit. And this, this way, Tim Ream can start picking out passes and he doesn't have that space in behind. Now, if they start to play high and Tim Ream's playing, that's going to be really important for Zach to come off his line. That's where he's had some issues that push off the acceleration. And then, you know, with his knee, with his, with his hammies and quads groins that, that might not play into, to Zach Steffen's uh, wheelhouse. I just hope that we don't have a situation where our goalkeeper is touching the ball more than one of our attacking players. I want to make sure we avoid that at all costs. So that, that is one thing with my thoughts on Matt Turner. Yeah, it's going to be tough. I think he's an excellent shot stopper. He's been very consistent when he's gotten his minutes with Arsenal and recently with the U.S. men's national team. I think that all needs to be taken into consideration. But if Zach Steffen is playing well running into this oh, and, and we is got, healthy, hey, but, hey, I don't we, know. We, 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 got, we got, look at this um, fashion icon in here just trying to stir the pot here. Uh, he's he's claiming he's a yank, but he's saying Zach's getting hammered in the press and that Michael Carrick is looking for other keepers. If this is just straight. I'm in here just to cause havoc. I I want people to start getting nervous. This and sounds questioning Zach Steffen. Come on here. This looks like this looks like uh, Matt Turner's doppelganger. His, <laughs> his, his burner. It's his Matt burner. Matt, Matt burner. Yeah. <laughs> this is Matt yeah. burner account. I, 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 I will. We got this. Go ahead. I will say ahead. this. What 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 I I've I can't remember. Okay, maybe when I was at the New York Red Bulls and we had Luis Robles and we had Ryan Mera, who who ended up that ended up being a short thing because he ended up having double hip surgery. Ever being in a situation, world uh, national team or club team, where there was not a, a sure number one? Did, have either of you guys played in a situation where you're in training environments every day? And I knew when I first got in the national team who the number one is. That two thousand five. Jimmy Howard. 
Yeah. No, no. Before no, I that, had Casey Keller. Casey oh, Keller. You had, you yeah. had. Casey so then, and then you went into Tim Howard, right? And it became the clear number one. There was like a handing of the baton, and 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 Casey Keller was still around. Um, but Tim Howard became the one, and but and then and then Brad Guzan became uh, uh the one for the national team. You you just knew what it was, and I I'm I'm just wondering what it feels like in the camp when you have two players that have completely different skill sets, right? Of, of what you want and what you need. Like the way in which we're judging the goalkeepers now with feet and whatever, very different than it was like Tim Howard wasn't great with feet. Craig Alexander wasn't great with feet. They were, they were solid with their feet. Well, that, um, I think that's the same as, as Friedel and Keller, right? When they were competing, because they were both very different. And yeah. you, you didn't know who the one was versus the two because they were both playing in Europe. Yeah, that's true. I mean, Jimmy played with Tony Miola in his, in his <laughs> teen years. So like... <laughs> You should have He's seen fun. my mullet back then. It was yeah. crazy. So, so you know what's interesting? Here's a fun fact about Casey Keller. He started six World Cup games in his career, zero wins, five losses, one draw. And 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 then when we played with him in the Copa America, all three of us did. We didn't win any games in the Copa America as well. I, Jimmy, listen, Jimmy's I, keeping stats. Jimmy's oh, out there keeping. Oh stats. my I'm, I'm God, Casey, Casey, Casey can't wait to see you next. Time. Well, well, yeah, he oh. can he can bring up all the stats about how I sucked at all that too. So <laughs> I, I'm, I'm I'm okay with it, and I'm prepared mentally and emotionally to, <laughs> to handle yeah. any heat. Uh, uh, but I will say that um, it's going to be interesting. I think you make a, a good argument as to the skill sets and and who's going to fit best, and we'll see if there's a rotation of this squad throughout the World Cup. Or if that's already been pre-planned, or if there's going to be a a set lineup that we're probably just going to tinker with maybe one or two spots. I think that's yet to be seen. Mm. Third goalkeeper, though, while we're in the goalkeeper conversation, uh, Charlie, I come to you. Sean Johnson mm. or Ethan Horvath for you at this point? Because Sean Johnson going to be sitting around, not having a meaningful game after getting knocked out in the playoffs with NYCFC. Mm -hmm. Had a good season. He was solid. Made some clutch, clutch saves as he has done throughout his career. Obviously played very well for us and score, uh, made some good saves against Uruguay. Back in June, when he got his opportunity, Horvath though also another steady player, doing yeah. well with Luton Town. I mean, these guys are good, solid number threes. But but who do you go with? Who do you think? I guess I guess when I think about Nick Ramondo, didn't he play in two World Cups? He was like our vibes guy. I love Ramondo, but but he knew he wasn't going to play. But you have to have somebody that's going to be good I, for the I team. Think he only good was one. one. He was fourteen. He yeah, would have been. I think he would have been eighteen too. But uh, one, I don't I know. If one, ever, I don't know if you guys remember what happened there in the old eighteen. Uh, I'm trying to forget. <laughs> I, I I will say I would if I had to pick, I'd pick Sean Johnson just because he's been so good for for two years now, two seasons. Just all, penalty shot shots, his shot stopping, even his feet have improved tremendously. For me, just seeing him in in the friendlies um, in the summer, that that's who I'm going with. And he's just a great locker room presence. He's he's a he's he brings it every day in training. Yeah. He's, he's like a soundboard. That's that would be my guy, I, but I know Ethan Horvath is a great kid too. Everyone rallies around him, especially knowing how he came into a game. He's already proven being cold, coming in for a Nations League final match against Mexico and making some big saves. So it's hard to say, man, we're gonna forget about Ethan Horvath and what he's done, especially because he's playing, you know, every week in the championship. But I, I just think the late push for, for Sean Johnson uh, would take him over the top for me. Yeah, we'll give it a, a shout out. I, I like Sean Johnson as well. I, mm -hmm. Gago Slanina, do you think? No, too, too soon. Too, too young. Soon. Too, soon. too soon. When they too when soon. they increase the World Cup to 48 teams and they go to 90 person rosters, then yeah, Gago, <laughs> Gago would have made well, this He one. might even be uh, pushing yeah, to start yeah. at that point in yeah. four years. But yeah. but I, I, I think I, I agree with Charlie that I'm, I'm going to go with Sean Johnson. I mean, he's just. He's been on, he's been good for a year. Yeah, they started a little slow this year and whatnot, but he's been solid, especially in the playoffs, playing on a team that doesn't have, didn't have a ton of possession, had to keep his team in games. Uh, you know, he's kind of got that. And, and I think with that comes trust, right? That trust that you're ready to play uh, if, if called upon. I highly doubt he'll be called upon or in the third will be called upon, but you never know. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, my, that's my third goalkeeper. Uh, for this, okay, for this. okay. Now, before we get into a couple other injuries that I want to discuss before our first and only break of the show, uh, Charlie, you have fashion icon coming back at you saying I'm a fellow yeah. Bostonian who starts versus Wales. Hey, in goal, let's go who Boston. Does? Come on, Chuck. Come on. Who, who, who starts in goal for you against Wales right now? Zach Steffen starts. You think that's because of Matt Turner's injury? Yes, then? I think it's because of Matt Turner's injury. If Matt Turner had not been injured and continue to play number one, um, Arteta comes out and says, this this kid is for real. He's a yeah. real top goalkeeper, good improving. He would be starting in the World Cup, but an injury makes it much easier for for Greg Berhalter to say, 
I'm going with Zach Steffen. He's fit. He's healthy now. He's better with his feet. So ultimately, I'm going to go with the the player who's who's fit and in form. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think I'm, that's, I'm going with Turner. That's part of it. You think Turner will end up being? I mean, yeah, fashion I icon just, didn't ask you actually, uh, but I, like, I, 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 <laughs> I, I just look back at those games and I go, I'm going with who's going to keep me in games, make those big saves. I don't like. I, I don't. I just don't see a world in this World Cup where the little balls that we saw from Zach Steffen over the years, we can clip it and keep it and whatever are super important. But I just don't think this team showed an, an, an ability uh, for that to be a, a a value. Now, maybe it is, you know how it is when you defend for long periods, having a goalkeeper that can find that pass and help you to break pressure and keep it when you're defending for waves and waves. Maybe that is the difference and they're equal on, on shot stopping. So I don't know, but I, I, it's hard for me to overlook Turner right now, unless, you know, unless it's like a, Again, injury going going into the that the roster. Yeah, I know. I know you want Matt Turner, but who do you think Greg starts first game versus Wales? Also, take into consideration if if we've all had these little honestly grow, growing injuries. If you have a little bit of a growing injury, you are you're not playing the same way, man. You're not playing free. You're 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 just you're groins thinking about are, things you shouldn't be thinking are about. Tough groins yeah. are really tough. Yeah. yeah so Heath, who are you starting that? So you going still Matt Turner? I think I still want to stick with 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 uh you know kind of innocent until proven guilty uh matt turner on this one you know type <laughs> man of look at his yeah. growing his growing's on trial well, right is now, he Ruby. still on your three down or <laughs> no yeah, no exactly no right. i mean i put everybody on it now <laughs> dude i'm just i'm nervous i'm That's hoping a- everybody's just disappearing because they were like dude this might be my world cup i better i better pull up you know pull up lame for a couple of weeks so hey I, sure I get picked shout out to all my my youtube comments here you know it any injury to matt turner that was going to be especially when zach's starting is the easy out to say going back to my original guy yeah my yeah, number true. one that's fair come on yeah hmm. i get it i get it i i it's interesting brad friedel actually came out and said that matt turner should leave arsenal because he's too good of a goalkeeper to sit behind aaron ramsdale so that's interesting nice to see brad friedel resurfacing after a not very successful stint as head coach of the New England Revolution. Maybe she get everybody in a circle and they can talk about uh, how bad they were that particular game. That's a, that's a deep cut there for Charlie Davies and Revolution fans. All right, so a couple more injuries before we got to let Charlie go as well. We take our first break. Uh, Weston McKinney's still out, but Cameron Carter-Vickers doesn't go to Madrid to play against Los Blancos in the Champions League because he has soreness in his knee. This oh, yeah. is a player cocoon. that Chuck, no. He's Chuck wrapping in the cocoon. Start. He's wrapping in the cocoon. He's he's, well, he's, okay. he's like bubble That's wrap. That's fine. Not only is he wrapping his phys- like physical body in the cocoon, I mean, emotionally and for confidence, we don't want him to get slapped around by Real Madrid either. So there's a lot to like about him not going down and playing the reigning Champions League winners. Oh, you mean the three penalties they gave up? Three penalties, <laughs> you know, get hitting on the counter, just chasing the game the from, whole time. From the center it's back? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, not, it's, like, it's yeah. not great, the, the center back situation with everyone injured. It's not great. It's not ideal. Or sharp, right? Because players aren't right. Z- like Zimmerman and Aaron Long. Zimmerman. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I know we're we're on center backs, but midfield, right? McKinney out. It's only really two options: Aronson and Reyna. I, I would assume. Well, well, we saw I in guess. Saudi Arabia, Kellen Acosta actually. Not that McKinney yeah. was out there too, but Acosta yeah. was there. And, you could have Acosta, Musa, and Adams. I think Acosta's in play because of what Greg. If he yeah, wants to get a little bit more so. conservative, he could do it. Very much so. But if you're if you're thinking Wales, you might have more possession, more attacking opportunities. Aronson or 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 Reyna makes sense, and in possession, probably Reyna. And then in England, if you're talking about, we're just going to be playing long, pressing, need counterattacks, more movement. That's probably more in in a Brent Aronson role or Kellen Acosta. I mean if you want someone a little bit more defensive and you play with two Acosta and Adams, but what are you, how do you feel about the midfield with, with the U S considering those of the, the I, to be options? honest, I, I like our options. I like yeah. that we have some depth. I like that we can go defensive with Acosta and feel very comfortable with him there. And I also like that we have two different types of players in Aronson and Reyna that can give us different looks. So we have three different lo- and then De La Torre had he been healthy I don't think he's I don't know if he's going to make the team anymore because it looks like he's going to be out but but he even gives a little bit of a different wrinkle than those other three guys so I don't I don't mind our, our midfield central midfield has always been pretty solid assuming everybody stays healthy so I'm totally cool with with what at well I'd prefer to your point to see to see something more attacking wise against Wales but I guess we'll have to wait and see how it goes 
Uh, we'll get into the poor part more of this conversation. Excuse me. We got to let Chet go. We got to take our first and only break of In Soccer yes. We Trust. Much love so to y'all. when we come back, it'll just be me and Heath, which is kind of how everybody wants it anyway. You yeah. guys know what I'm talking about. And uh, Charlie. Just kidding, Charlie. Just kidding, Charlie. We love you and we love Zimmerman as well. And it's going to be great. <laughs> Enjoy those mahogany walls. And we'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. The UEFA Champions League on Paramount Plus. Nine months of heart stopping, hold your breath, acceleration. That's brilliant. With more magic and more drama. While a former Bavarian nails the back of the net in Barcelona, an American trades his stars with zebra stripes, and a Norwegian creates sky blue spectacles. Oh, so stream every sweat, so second of regulation time, stoppage time, and extra time. Beyond magnificent. This is the best of the best of the best. This is the UEFA Champions League. Stream every match live exclusively on Paramount Plus. Welcome back to It's Soccer We Trust. I'm Jimmy Conrad alongside Hollywood Heath Pierce. And Jim Jr. Take, I'm going by Jim, Jim Jr. Jr. today. Jim Jr. Before we take any steps forward, though, if you have a team that you're going to be supporting in the World Cup or any Champions League teams that are making the knockout rounds, make sure you head over to soccer.com to rep your team. Also, for MLS Cup that's happening this weekend, you can go to soccer.com and get on their Gold Club loyalty program where a $5 membership will give someone up to 10% off Every order, are you ready for this? For life. All right. So make sure you head over to soccer.com and sign up for their Gold Club loyalty program. It is pretty sweet. All right. Hollywood Heath Pierce, mm -hmm. you want to finish this midfield conversation? Because you didn't get to answer. I, I actually like the options we have. That's this is like the area yeah. of the field that I, I'm just like, yeah, we got it. We got it. Covered. Actually, it actually, I actually like it more than when De La Torre was it, part of that mix. Because the more the more that we have to change, the more that we have to force change that I think is good for us, right? Which is a Gio Reyna in there or a Brendan Aronson if you had to, as opposed to saying you've got your three in there, plus you've got a Luca De La Torre, which would be your most natural fit. You've got a Kellen Acosta that could go in more of a, either a two-way or or you're kind of sweeping your back line. And then maybe you go into that depth of a, of a Reyna. Whereas like, for me, I'm like, shoot, if you're missing one of those guys, let's put Reyna in there. What's the worst that can happen? Okay, it doesn't work. Maybe you move him out. You put somebody, you put a, uh, now we don't, you put, you move somebody, you could, sorry, you could take Weya out and move Reyna to the wing and you can move, uh, Brendan Aronson inside. If it's not working, you have options like is what I'm getting at. You have three or four ways that you can tinker with that. That's not ideal, but I do, I I'm, I'm comfortable with the players that we have. And I like the idea of being forced to maybe even have to go with a, a Reyna in there because I don't know if he would otherwise, and he could be huge for us in the midfield. If yeah. he's willing to press and do some of the things that we need um, on the transition side of the game. Do you think that, and I had this conversation offline with a friend about whether we're set up better or our players are set up better to, to counterattack. And, and are we comfortable as a team? Because there's been such a heavy emphasis on high press, high press, high press, high press all the time. Are we comfortable enough to just sit back and absorb? And, and we've seen evidence of it. I, I've talked about the game in Mexico City, where we found that nice balance of when to high press and when to sit back. And if we replicate what we did against Mexico and Mexico City during World Cup qualifying, I feel really good if we could do it in all three games for the vast majority of it that we could get mm -hmm. into the groups or the knockout rounds. But I just thought this is just, we're going to have to solve problems very quickly and identify how to take advantage of the other opponent's problems uh, as quickly as possible for that to happen. And, and not to say that we don't have the players to do it. I just wonder what that's going to look like. So I just, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, because I think again, we get it. you have to balance. You have to that, balance. You can't play, play that, the same way the whole way. If we're going to play with a counter that I think Pepe's our guy for the whole world cup, we're going to play on the counter because I think he's really good at, at hold up, play, lay the ball off and then sprint to get into the box. Right. And then you need Christian Pulisic to either get the ball and be able to run at people, which means you need players running off the ball team away. I think could do both. Yeah. I mean, when I look at that front three, we are set up well to counter. But the problem is when you counter, you have to be able to hedge a little bit on drawing teams further into your space to create the counterattacking opportunity, right? Now there's the Gagan press, which is a counter in itself. Um, but in areas where you've got to know where you're going to get the ball that allows your front three to be in positions to counter quickly and create the advantage, right? It can't just be like, we sit back, we withstand pressure, we get the ball, and then we lump it forward, and hopefully we can go three on three because teams can stay more balanced against that, right? You you and I know, center backs, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. one in front, one behind. Okay, now Pepe can't get the ball. Now what happens if if uh, if uh, Pulisic wants the ball underneath and he's been drawn too far back or we defend for long periods? So 
counterattacking is 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 pretty vague on what that could mean because where you counter from deep or you counter higher up the field, I think we could be successful at both. But we have to have a way in which we're going to win the ball that puts our players in positions and not just be reactive on like, oh, now we've got the ball. Our only option is lump it and run because that's what we call a counterattack. Yeah, no, 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 I like that. Again, there is some nuance to how you move as a group and, and the decisions that you make and the timing of those runs and the support of that. What's really interesting about this particular World Cup is that we don't have that lead-in time. We don't have that two or three weeks together before that first game where we can start to work I, through. Yeah, they the would have had points. to take me. They would have had to take me <laughs> in 2010. You know, there's no lead-in. Either pick me or don't, man. Like, what's going <laughs> exactly on? Right. I don't hang out in Princeton, New Jersey. Just tell me if I'm going. Exactly right. Exactly right. And uh, you're clearly not still bitter. Um, no, no, I'm fine. I'm, I'm glad we get to use the podcast. As a yeah, bit of I know. Seriously, you. this is thousands of dollars saved by just being able to say it on here. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. And I think there has to be some understanding that what we want to do for 90 minutes is not going to work for 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. and And teams are going to figure that out and solve us and solve what we're trying to do in that particular moment. And can we adjust? And that's going to be the big challenge. When Gio Reyna came on the show and I asked him about what happens if Wales sets up like Japan and you can't get the ball, what are you going to do? And his answer was, well, the coach has a plan. I'm just going to follow the plan. That's an answer, Heath Pierce. That is an answer. And, and, and I love that answer because I feel like it's throwing a little shade at the coaching staff. But it, it just – we have to – we have to make sure that there's room – to adapt and and we're gonna i mean i feel like i'm beating a dead horse we're saying a lot of the same things so so ultimately it's going to be how we move and how we how we go together is it's going to be predicated on who we start and, and then it's going to be uh, but you know but are you, you, know are you getting how... more nervous are you getting more nervous since uh, as we're getting closer or are you getting more confident because that's um, like, I'm, I'm i feel like i'm getting more nervous yeah i'm getting more nervous for sure but I also don't want to get to the point where it's like paralysis through analysis, where like I feel like our national team in the last months has gotten stuck in this mindset of like trying to play genius football or trying to do things that don't fit within because we're trying to push ourselves to the brink of our comfort zone or outside of our comfort zone. And now we need to go back to simplifying it. And you know how it is, Jimmy. On the field, there are times where we say, you know what, we're going to go out and press. And one of your teammates decides, yeah, that's sort of that's sort of what I'm going to do right? And, and now they're breaking the press on us every time because somebody's arriving late or we're not pressing together yeah, or yeah. The, the, the pressing isn't understood. And that's when you need to have, when I, when I look at the team, these leaders that say, guys, okay, just sit in our mid block. Let's tighten this up and make it harder. Force them wide because they're showing us, yeah, we thought they were amazing wide, but they're not doing anything wide. So force them like that sort of like understanding, um, I think is what's going to be more important than anything Greg Berhalter does because you go into it. And again, I go back to the women's world cup. There was all kinds of rumors, some of which I think were, were, were significant, that the players and Jill Ellis did not get along and that the players were going to come together uh, despite anything she wanted and to spite what she wanted to show that they can win United regardless of what um, the game plan was or what the, the tension was in the locker room. They came together and United. And this that, group that's, is going to have to do that. That's an experience team you're talking about the women's world cup though that is the true. Women's national team. that is a very experienced highly successful win almost every competition they're in women's team and this is a team yeah. that's not like that they're not the same age they don't have that savvy they haven't been around they they haven't seen enough of a, of a life let's say to understand the repercussions of a potential decision that's gone either good or bad and then when you've lived as long as i'd say some of the girls uh excuse me some of the women on the women's national team they they yeah but having said that they have more pressure than any sports team we've probably ever produced in the U S other than maybe the redeem team, uh, to go and win, uh, the world cup at all costs. And with that type of tension, there needed to be that, 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 that unity. Right. So I, yeah, I, I, um, I agree with you though. There is that, that you can't, you so, can't fabricate experience, uh, to do that, but they're going to have to tap into something that brings them together where even if it's one player, even if Walker Zimmerman says, guys, Everybody in my hotel room tonight. We're going to talk about this. Yeah, sure. It doesn't matter. Yeah, we've gotten to this point. Whatever. F the rest. F this. F that. Here's how we're going to come together. When things go bad, we're going to all look each other in the eyes and 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 do that. And again, when I when I played with the national team B team uh, a couple of times, or not our A team, and you don't have the leaders that you can look to, 
you still had to look within your group and and find who was going to rise to the occasion or who was going to lead by example or lead verbally. And they need to be able to come together to do that because they will get punched in the face at some point. And they need to have that unity and belief that we've been hearing about this team that gets along and everybody has so much fun and all these personalities that can, they can get out of these types of things. Well, we're going to find out how true that is once the whistle blows uh, against Wales and how together they are if things aren't going well. One of the reasons that's made me a little bit nervous is that I went on a podcast recently that had a host that's Iranian. Mm -hmm. And he asked me to predict how I thought the group stage was going to go. I'm like, sweet, buddy. This seat just got a lot hotter. Appreciate that. But when I asked him, I'm sure everybody wants to know what I was, what I said, but I'll, I'll get to that. When I asked him what he thought, he thought Iran had the advantage over the U.S. and Wales because of our lack of experience. Obviously, Wales hasn't qualified for a World Cup in 58 years. We have a bunch of players that have never played a World Cup and are still very young. And that Iran does have that experience. They know what it takes. They were unlucky not to get through the group stages in 2018. A couple things didn't go their way. The fine margins. You have this Wales team, though, as we started to have a further discussion. This core of players does have quite a bit of experience. They obviously have to get through a tough, tough European qualifying phase. And we have our own difficulties over in CONCACAF for, for our own reasons in this part of the world. So I'm not going to say that is the only thing. But this is a team that got to the, the Euro semifinals in 2016, got out of the groups in the Euros last summer. And, and they have cut their teeth in high-pressure situations and have found success. And that leaves us. And then that just gives me, as much as I feel like the youth is, is valuable and fearlessness and, and having a chip on their shoulder, having everything to prove and all these kind of intangibles and narratives that we can build, we still haven't put, what is it, rubber to the road or whatever. We haven't, yeah. we haven't, we haven't proven anything yet. And these other teams have in other various ways. And so, and have that experience to know how to fight through some adversity and know how to solve these problems that you're talking about that, yeah, okay, maybe they're probably still having the same conversations. You go to Wales hotel and, and they're having, okay, guys, listen, this is, this is it. This is our golden generation's chance to play in the first World Cup. Let's do whatever we have to do. Let's sacrifice. You know, I mean, if we can put ourselves in their shoes. That's what they're saying. And they're probably looking at the U.S. as we just need to punch them in the face because they're not old enough to know how to respond to that. And that gives me a little bit of nerves as I start to, how would I act if I was on either one of those? other England, I'm leaving out of it because they know they, they want to beat us. And I actually think that we'll probably play our best against England because we'll be the straight underdogs. We got nothing to lose. And I bet you we play a little bit more free and relaxed in that one. But mm -hmm. the other ones, people expect us to beat. And not to say that I don't have that same expectation, but I just don't think it's going to be as easy as it might seem based on the size of our country and the sizes of theirs and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I, I, I look at Iran and I see experience. I see them bringing in an, an experienced manager again. I see them feeding off of not necessarily an underdog role, but what is perceived to be an underdog, knowing that they're good enough to be able to try to get results against uh, or, or or get results against the U.S. They are definitely good enough to beat the U.S. They're definitely good enough to beat Wales. Um, and Wales probably feels the same thing, right? And that's a dangerous group. But that's where I like this, our, 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 our players and, the, and the, the quality that they have, the level that they're playing at right now. Um, yes, there's injury scares and we can speculate. We can get into the minutia of all those types of things. But when I look at the way that they can match up, in a game that matters and in a game of consequence, I have yet to see the U our U.S. national team fail with this group. Right? Mm -hmm. We didn't play. We played horribly in. Uh, no, that's that's a little extreme. But we played pretty it's, it's bang dramatic. average in 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 the Nations League final. Mexico was better. Honduras was better than the U.S. for large portions in the semifinals. We won the Nations League. We played pretty average in the Gold Cup final. We came out of that scrapping and fighting. It wasn't beautiful. It wasn't playing somebody off the pitch. I don't even remember a game in either of those competitions that we played somebody off the pitch. And then got into qualifying. We're up against the ropes. Down a goal against Honduras away from home. The team found a way and battered Honduras in the second half and have continued to go through that. Yes, it hasn't been pretty. Yes, we should finish on top of our qualifying if our ambition is what it is. And I know we can set these higher, higher standards. But so far, this team has found a way under duress to, to at least put together somewhat of a, a a a a performance that is hard to beat and hard to play against and it's not pretty and that's what i keep going back to now whether that was lucky or that's the pride of the crest or whatever these things is that are, the things are that you, are hard to explain i'm hoping that comes out in the world cup against iran against especially wales in the first game that we're able to go and get three points even if it's as ugliest of a match we've ever seen from this u.s national team yeah, I don't really care how it looks. I just want to make sure we get the result. But I'm a firm believer that you create your own luck. 
And we did create our own luck in those matches that you're referencing. I think what's interesting, if we look at the fine margins of all those particular games, we did it on set pieces. And I feel like that's something that's been lacking over the last, let's say, six friendlies and maybe even at the back end of World Cup qualifying where we haven't been as sharp. And again, if you're scouting us, that's one area that you think, okay, this is where these guys score. This is where they like to have a lot of success. This is what gives them belief. They hit the back of the net. If we score first, I'll feel really good about the rest of the Wales game. But if Wales scores first, even though we fought, fought back before, I just worry that Wales are their experience of knowing how to shut up or shut it down and, and set up shop right in front. They obviously holding off Ukraine to, to book their ticket here. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I just, again, I'm, I'm, I'm just getting a little bit more nervous. That's just me being as transparent as possible as we start to inch a little bit closer. Total belief in the guys I'm excited for the roster that's happening on November 9th. And I think Charlie's going to be there. We'll have more details for you next week. And we'll obviously do an immediate emergency podcast right after the roster drops on November 9th. I believe that is a Wednesday. So be on the lookout for that. But we have another podcast tomorrow, and we'll break down all the big games, the last weekend of games for all of our players in the player pool before the roster gets announced again November 9th on Wednesday. All right, Heath Pierce, final thoughts before we let everybody go. No, I mean, I'm really excited. Again, the 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 the, the not ideal for some players, but I, I would be surprised outside of your top eight that everyone's going through it, right? We just saw we just saw that Timo Werner is out for the World Cup, and players are continuing to face Pogba out for the World Cup. Uh, we're seeing less than ideal circumstances happening to even the best of teams, and we're going to have to just roll with what we got. And fortunately, if there's one thing that I can go back to, is that we may not have played with the same eleven. We actually played with opposite elevens almost every game for in the entirety of the last three years. But we've gained a lot of valuable experience for all the players that may have to be called upon to do something heroic or even play some sort of role for us in a World Cup. So uh, as I'm getting more nervous, I'm trying to go back to some sort of like foundational pillars that I think um, exist. And and yeah, I'm I'm you know let's, I, I'm getting I'm getting becoming more relaxed about it. Okay, I appreciate that. I'm gonna have to channel that vibe into my own veins. But I do want to say that guys don't have to be perfect. We're not looking for ten out of tens. If enough of them are seven or eight out of tens, as you like to say, Heath Pierce, I think that puts us in a good spot to get results mm -hmm. in all three of our matches in the World Cup. All right, we are done. Thank you for listening and watching in soccer. We trust so on behalf of producer Des and producer Alex and Charlie Chuck Wagon Davies and Hollywood Heath Pierce. I'm Jimmy Cream Trees, Trash Can, Conradinho, also known as Jim Conrad. And I just want to say one last thing before we let you go. I'm Jim yeah, we, Jr. And Jim Jr. over there, Heath <laughs> Pierce. I just want to let everybody know that we have a new superhero out there, and his name is Zimmerman. All right, we'll see you next time. Later. <laughs>